Extinction of a species can happen for a lot of different reasons. Like the, with the rhino in South Africa, mostly due to poaching and smaller and smaller areas of land where the species is able to breed. But even the animals under the local sea can be at risk for reasons like overfishing, quiet and plant. So it's called local and one of those a bit later in Kubik. So Pina Futu Solegabans about a species that some of you might find a little scary, the bat. Even the darkest, most scary looking animals can be at risk. Coming up on TOMZ, we found out about the process of natural selection in nature, who and what survives and why. We go a little bit batty in case it in and find out more about this very misunderstood species. We go under the sea and find out about some endangered ocean life and we check out some amazing online content in cyberspace. Now, the survival is all about adapting to your environment and making the best of it. That's basically why Gabbana have done so well on this planet. Kumbadam Tinasesa Funda, how to use our surroundings to their full potential. What's the best way you think we've adapted? Tinaga Sabuza Abantu Abakul Balayim Zantu Kwana Batabangin. Abakunikan. Yeah, it's sharp. It's sharp, it's sharp. Yeah, I'm George. Okay, if you can again, but what's that one skill is now it's in our band that makes us survive in this planet? I think it's the ability to do work. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. no, it's the No, it's the skill of thinking, like, skalang, like, okay, ngenzan, just for today, ngusi ngaporegi, okay, let me go and play ball. Mm -hmm. That's the skill of thinking. Okay, uksebenza, because most sebenza are obvious, you're going to get paid, then you have to, with that money, you have to look after your family. Uh -huh. yeah. And this is Piskilis Nasa that makes us control our planet? Uh, I'd say it's planting because it helps us uh, manage global warming. Because oh, yeah? planta, yes. my plant helps control the, the heat from the from above. Okay. Um, I think it's by planting uh, things so that we can take care of the environment. Plus, trees give us oxygen. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think planting too because when you plant, you decrease the carbon dioxide mm -hmm. and uh, you increase the oxygen. Natural selection is a mechanism designed by nature. It means that certain species adapt and evolve to suit their environment better and to survive. So basically, you see, organisms who are best suited to an environment survive better and they produce most successfully. So man, we have adapted using their highly developed brains which allow them to outthink other species. Mm -hmm. So we have been able to make the best of our environment because of the skills that we have developed. And the same goes for animals that have survived throughout the centuries. Natural selection is a concept that was first put forward by Charles Darwin in his theory of evolution. In nature, there are survivors and there are those that don't survive. Survivors are species that are able to survive and reproduce, and the non-survivors or species that go extinct are whatever species that fail to survive and reproduce due to environmental factors. Sometimes an animal could become extinct because there is no food available for it, or it could become extinct because it has not been able to adapt to its climate. It could also become extinct because there are way too many predators that hunted and not enough reproduction in the species to keep its population alive. This process of survival of species that are strong enough to deal with all the factors in their environment is called natural selection. Now things are about to get a little creepy. Mm -hmm. And Silo and Nabong Yosip, we're about to head over to the dark side to learn a little bit more about bats. Now, because most people want to get pets, no more thing Dracula, ghosts and goblins. Like all the scary stories called to be tonight, they're actually a very important part of our ecosystem. Now I think it's time that we found out more. natural selection and extinction. While touchdown umkomazi, so for why for ecosystem. You and me need to learn more about this. So let's go. Welcome to TOMZ. So what do you have in your hand right now? Jamo jang Yes. Why am I pete i pet gesu di bizang luluane noma tusamadel. Yes. Why am I am I luluane balilegang gana into our ecosystem? Okay, I'm a little one. 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 I'
so in the way out into a habitat, young leaper, as I was pillar and any into Amma beds, and to weigh in Amma wind energy farms. Yes. Now talking of no winds of energy, Ganjalo and Ganjal. In the general days, okay, Gangabuti, Amma beds and this soup, Pezul. So I'm saying goes in what you answer, Asha, and my arm. I shall prepare and cut it or prepare by the petrol more. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm going to have my best lambs and like sugar, 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 sugar. Lambs and snake pieces as you 58. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to have my best. I'm a intuitive respect. I feel like for around 14 years, I'm going to have a fruit eating best. I'm going to have a fruit eating best. I'm going to have a fruit eating best up to um, 40 years. Besse <laughs> Lau ada main sekte apa menjalur masuk ilang masuk show sunset masuk show ilang apa pun ama ama lau ada main sekte apa ambau zengel ada 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 ini lah ada azengel yang aku nanti ikut location aku pun um sin do uye gul leon do le afun lagi je kan aku aku pun sin do fana lah es do gul leon leon dah ifun awi ini aku nanti dah ingosi kok saya saya fuzah pun dah ar arah cerita yang kau dunia aku tu ikut nak gul leon fun fun awal log gul dia agan nani besok ni mac Okay. <laughs> Okay. Like I always wanted to ask this question. Why do birds hang upside down? Uh, Next time you see a bird flying around your head, do not be scared. They're not scary at all. They just misunderstood. Jungle bog, go on, check out the channel. Basmuyaga will be going under the sea to find out more about endangered sea life. Uzuta Rushel. Charms. Charms. Sweet as I'm getting out of what's in the time, as in chasing moves. It's like TOMZ. I don't have a look with Nani. Teenagers on a mission. They're like, why you can't be like, it's like, what? What's the answer for sure, Lord? Mm-hmm. Santa Rui, check out the process of natural selection and extinction in Amshanja. And there are lots of reasons why species might survive or become extinct, including human expansion into natural environments. In Shalokai, now in the past 500 years, we know of about a thousand species that have gone extinct. Why a thousand species could have gone extinct before scientists could actually study them? 
As is Ranyana Pagia on land that can be threatened by extinction. There's also a whole world that we don't see in the oceans all over Eliuzo Eli. And many species of the sea life are also at risk due to factors like overfishing. Mm -hmm. Over three quarters of our planet is covered by the oceans, and sea life is amazingly diverse and full of life that we know about. And even stranger life we never see, like microorganisms that live in the water. Why well, maintaining the natural balance underwater is just as important as it is to maintain it on land. We head up to Ushaga and KZN get to find out more about some underwater problems and how we can actually be a part of the solution. Ni tsesa la tegin ba fetse ni sakuba ngi mission ya city touchdown u shaka morin wa sinjele ku tsuna ngi overfishing kono putwe tsu stressa la kabanzu ku tsikatsa kati what is overfishing no ku tsina ba tuba la mzanti sanza ka jani ku tsi vigele yonke le problem le you me let's go learn more my name is Stuart Dunlop. I'm an assistant scientist at the Oceanographic Research Institute. Yeah. But basically, I'm a marine biologist. Oh, oh, okay. Stuart, so tell us, what exactly is overfishing? People, you know, fishing more or taking out more out of the ocean than what they should. Okay, so Stuart, tell me about the species that are endangered by the threat. So, around the world, the most common species which what I mean by common is the one that's the most endangered. and I think a lot of people know about are the tuna populations yes and specifically bluefin tuna basically what's happened there is people around the world have targeted this fish because it's very high quality you know it's a good fish to eat and it's really expensive so because it's really expensive people obviously go out, try and get it to sell it because they make a lot of money from it so it's like a you know a continuous drive to keep trying to catch this fish mm -hmm. and unfortunately what's happened is the more fish people have taken out the less fish there are left over to contribute to the population Yes. You know, to breed, to have more babies and so on. Okay, so tell me, how is overfishing being monitored? So what happens is scientists like myself or marine biologists, we conduct surveys. And according to the different fish species, we might do surveys offshore, you know, where those species occur. So for example, hake, and um, what happens is we'll do big surveys and see how much hake is left over after a season. Yeah. And then we basically work out through, you know, various methods whether we can continue continue the current levels of, you know, how much we're taking out yeah. or if we need to cut some of those levels so that those populations can kind of replenish or, or come back a little bit and continue the cycle. And you know, that's as marine biologists, that's exactly what we do. We have to monitor all these sort of fisheries to, to see. Okay, so tell me about the MSC, because I've seen a lot of logos that appear on the fish products. What is that? What does it stand for? The MSC is the Marine Stewardship Council. Yes. And basically what they've done is they have an accreditation um, an accreditation. So what they do is they, they see where fish comes from yes. and um, how it is harvested. And if it is harvested in a sustainable or a good way, then they allow, they put their accreditation or their logo on a product and they say that this product is the right product to choose if you want to make a choice and be sustainable about the choice of, of fish you eat. So if you're in a supermarket um, and you choose a type of fish or you have a range of fish in front of you, if you look on all the boxes of fish and you see the one you see with the MSC logo, yeah. that's the best one to choose because it is obviously the one that's harvested in the most sustainable way and it comes from sustainable populations, so populations that are are big enough to sustain the harvesting that's yes, taking place. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So besides the MSC logo, which other things should I look out for? The SASI Guide, mm -hmm. it's known as the South African Sustainable Seafood Initiative. Yes. And this guide is basically a guide which is put together by a bunch of scientists. And if you go to a restaurant and you want to order fish, um, there's a, a green, an orange and a red list. And if you look on the menu and it says, for instance, that they have Dorado to eat, you can look on this list and see where it falls in that category. So if it falls in the green list, it means that it's a good fish to eat, it's sustainable and you know the stocks aren't heavily um, over harvested or overfished. Yeah. If it occurs in the orange list, it means we're kind of unsure, we would prefer you to pick green but it's still okay and if it occurs in the red list, absolutely you shouldn't really be eating this fish because it's harvested in a bad way, yeah. might be a lot of ba bad bycatch or there's not a lot of them left. Each restaurant can ask them, please can I see the sassy guard list? And, and you can look what fish they have on their menu and you can match it up to which list it falls into. What other challenges do fish face in the ocean besides overfishing? Well, there's actually quite a lot. Um, the two that kind of are the most pertinent or the most um, you know, important at the moment are pollution. So, you know, there's a lot of pollution going into the oceans and obviously that affects fish in an extremely bad way. You know, it affects their, their breeding, where they breed, how they breed. 
Um, and also the other one is climate change. Yes. What I mean by climate change is over the last you know, 20 years or so, the, the whole Earth's atmosphere has been warming and this has caused, caused a lot of the oceans to warm as well. And as you can imagine, if temperatures change and in the ocean where specific fish are used to specific temperatures, it can affect their breeding, you know, how, how they survive, whether they will survive. So yeah, there's a lot of challenges that face you know, um, our fishes and, and the population of the fish. But the positive is that in South Africa we have some of the best rules and laws and regulations that you know, allow us to take fish out and I think we should be proud of that. Overfishing simply means catching too much fish for the natural system to support. Now all of this leads to an overall degradation to the system, meaning that overfishing is a non-sustainable use of the oceans. Commercial and non-commercial fishing that depletes a fishery by catching so many adult fish that not enough remain to breed and replenish the population means that the fish are being taken out of the sea faster than they can reproduce. Now all of this means that eventually that particular population of fish will die out simply because it can't reproduce at the same speed that it has been caught. So next time you're at the supermarket Nabazalbako and you head to the seafood section, try to remember that you can help the overfishing problem by buying fish that has been caught in a sustainable way. In Shalogai, now every species gear on this planet plays a role in an ecosystem. And if one species goes extinct, there are other species that can also be affected. Mm -hmm. And that applies both on land and under the sea. In Shalogai, Coming up, we go back in time in clockwise to find out about some of the species that have become extinct over the last hundred years. We go check out some amazing online content in cyberspace and we get some awesome career advice. So, Ungain Dao. Natural selection and extinction, and we've checked out some amazing and weird species right here on home soil, like the bat. Yes, and I'm getting things about bats are creepy. God, I don't, don't anymore. I mean, they're an important part of our life in our ecosystem. Now, what do you guys think about these flying mammals? Now, ask the locals, call out my channel, it's from Nata. Some are cats, Facebook, or Twitter. Why are you on the website where to fall in the right place to have a bitch? Imagine if we had a time machine in Abong. We could go back in history and save some of the species that have gone extinct. That would be amazing. See, I got you again. Get a little shot of them No one's invented time travel yet. So all we can do is look after the species we have today. But can imagine and can start a little imaginary trip back in clockwise though and find out about some of the animals that have gone extinct recently. The golden toad was a species that lived only in the Monte Ferrata Cloud Forest Biological Reserve in Costa Rica. It was declared extinct in August 2007. The amphibian disease, chytridiomycosis, pollution and global warming probably contributed to the species extinction. The last documented sighting of China's Baiji dolphin or Yangtze River dolphin was in 2002. And while the species is listed as critically endangered, scientists say that it may already be extinct. The Western Black Rhinoceros or West African Black Rhinoceros was declared extinct in 2011. It was once widespread in the savannah of Sub-Saharan Africa, but its numbers declined due to poaching. That's one species of the rhino that is already extinct and South African rhinos are also in danger due to poaching. Now South Africa is probably home to many of Africa's remaining rhinos. In 2010, it was estimated that we have around 18,796 white rhinos and 1,916 black rhinos. Oh, that is about 93% of the white and 40% of the total black rhino populations in the whole world. In recent years, poaching levels have gone up massively and the world is coming on board to try and solve the crisis. My Check out savetherhino.org online for all the real facts. But because I'm betting on seven cat to use cyberspace, I'm not going to let cats. If one of the first about species that are endangered, you gotta check out a Species Finder app, which allows you to find endangered species and links to free endangered species ringtones and actions you can take to help make a difference. Another great site that keeps your brain working is bestcollegesonline.com's interactive tool that lets you discover the 100 most endangered species in the world. It lets you research and search more than animals with results also including plants and fungi. And if one of you out there in the field doing some research and having fun, you gotta check out the ultimate field guide for larger Southern African mammals. A scientific breakthrough in the species identification lets a community to identify animals by silhouette, track shape, size, and dunk shape, and of course, a distribution icon. How great is that? 
So kukupanas are smartphones, tablets, and computers, which now you can learn so much about the natural world online. And even one of the solution in saving species like the white and black crime. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any oppression, why not think about getting into a career in one of our national parks? Tell me about what you say about the natural world. If nature and wildlife is your passion, you could consider studying to be a park ranger. Now, a park ranger should have a passionate interest in conserving natural resources, love outdoor life and animals, and have good health and physical fitness. You could either do a degree course or a diploma course to qualify. School subjects you'll need are mathematics as well as physical science, but only for the degree course. And the recommended subjects are life sciences as well as geography. Babang, and you're making a career in the great outdoors, working with animals, conserving endangered species. Isn't that great? Yo, I, that sounds like a pretty awesome career. You can always have to be something you just do for a mile. It can also be rewarding and satisfying. Let me check out to my Mm-hmm. Go on, Jagas. Morning, good catch. I'm going to be able to tell you career advice. We're now going to be able to tell you about awesome Jenga. Okay, but first, I'm going to be an ecologist. I'm going to be a high school teacher for science, especially biology, and I'm going to be in lab orientation. I'm going to be a teacher when they're in, in zoology. I'm going to be in zoology, and I'm going to be in animal behavior or nature conservation. I'm going to be a teacher for science, and I'm going to be a teacher for science, and I'm going to be a teacher for science, and I'm going to be a teacher for wildlife. As I've spoken about marine biology, I just want to tell you, if you want to become a marine biologist, you should really do it. It's a passion which I love, and if you have any love for the ocean or the fish that live in the ocean, you should definitely do it. Um, subjects that you need to take during school include uh, biology, maths, and unfortunately science, but trust me, if you stick through those things, they'll open up many, many avenues for you. Um, basically, then you need to go to university and you need to study for approximately three years. This might sound like a lot, but trust me, you'll enjoy yourself and just keep at it and and do the best you can and you'll become the best you can at the job you want to become <laughs> You guys rock my world. I'm really glued to my television. Thank you so much for watching ETOMZ. Homo Nyuba. I love it. And we love you. So tell me, honest. I mean, honest. You are yes. Now, you can see what I'm going to do. Easy, man. Yeah. 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 Mzi, kesi mbiye sine ngo, enchoko, apa mzansi. For now, papayi. Up next on TOMZ. How exactly does the whale make life more convenient? Sitibana yano mtu omcha who is using his knowledge of whales and axles to do something really cool. Sibwano ba umsebenzi unga gana na that goes into making sure that the whales on a car are ready to be emigakwe. Unga libalike wena ke ukubukela uti yo MZ kronge mivulu na ngolwezbini. Kinsi mbiye sine apa ku SABC1. Zanti for sure.